Good afternoon. I recently watched a three-part uh, video by uh, Dr. DiVitro, sorry, Dr. Kirk DiVitro, uh from the Gene Deenberg Society uh, called Clean Up Hazardous Materials. In essence, what the three-part video was, was an attempt to shoot this work here uh, by Gail Ripplinger, in which she points out that uh, uh, there's no need for anybody uh, who has a King James Bible to worry about a Greek lexicon, Hebrew lexicon, or will be concerned about the, what the Greek Hebrew says at all. And uh, now the problem with the Dean Burge Society, uh, while they did good work in texts, is, well, they often use the word King James Bible as the Bible, the Bible. What they really mean is there's a translation of the Bible. So what they, they don't really believe this is the Bible. They really believe that this is the Bible. And uh, the English here has to be explained by what's in here in Greek and Hebrew, uh, this Trinitarian Bible Society. So that's their problem, and uh, what they wanted you to do is go to the, the original text or the lexicons to understand uh, what the Bible really says. <clears throat> if you understand what the English says, you go look up in English. That's like anything else we do. You read some English, you, read, uh, uh, you, you look up in English. And uh, but what, is, what, what is the uh, status of these lexicons? Um, this will work here, uh, Biblical Greek and Language and Lexography, and uh, here's an article about the present state of lexicography in ancient, of ancient Greek. <clears throat> uh, lexicon, so you see, lexicons are regarded by their users of, as authoritative, and they put their trust in them. Lexicons are reference books presenting a compressed, seemingly final statement of fact with an almost legal weight. The mere fact that something is printed in a book gives it authority, as far as most people are concerned, and understandable. If one does not know the meaning of a word, one is predisposed to trust the only means of rescue from ignorance. Yet this trust is misplaced. As the Dean Bergen Society wants to eventually run into lexicons and trust them, not the King James Bible. The concise, seemingly authoritative statement of meaning can and often does conceal many sins. Indecision, compromise, imperfect knowledge, guesswork, and above all, dependence on predecessors. Lexicographers have to make a decision and put down a definite statement, and they are fallible like everyone else. But the ordinary user has no means of knowing where the mistakes have been made, where the ignorance has been covered up, what has been lifted from somewhere else without checking, and so on. These errors are passed down from one lexicon to another. They often copy each other, and uh, they have no qualms about doing so. So when you're reading one lexicon, you just might be reading another lexicon um, that was copied uh, from somewhere else. The question I want to address is what lexicons or dictionaries are available to provide guidance on meanings of words in all this vast body of Greek text? What sort of coverage is there? The idea would be one lexicon, lexicon that covers covered everything. This we don't have. The coverage is in fact partial, unsystematic, and uneven in quality. Excuse me. To put it more bluntly, there are gaps everywhere, and even those things that that seem to have been done have not been done as well as they could, and need uh, reassessment. He points out here again. Um, let's see. Uh, let us take first the New Testament as a lexicographical tradition of its own going back to the 16th century, yet there's a discernment feature to be seen when one looks closely at it, well, it looks closely. It is not possible to go over this ground detail here, but the salient points are, are these. First, there's a legacy of a long tradition of indicating meaning by glosses rather than definitions, which leads to many problems. Secondly, there's the fact that even the latest lexicons derived their material from the predecessors, and a great deal of it has been passed on out over on, uncritically over the course of centuries. Thirdly, there was an aspect that I think is not well known. Uh, meanings given in New Testament lexicon are contaminated by glosses from the standard translations going back as far as the Vulgate. There was a fourth tendency which has become evident to me lately. New Testament lexicons are unsystematic in their control of other discussions and may or may not take up useful contributions to the understanding of the meaning. All this mainly concerns the major lexicon series of Alton Bauer and its offshoots in English. So that's the point that the lexicons cannot be trusted. And um, uh, so Gary Whitman is exactly right on that. Now what about the King James translators? Did they have to depend on lexicons? They did not. Uh, with the, uh, the case of the, uh, the Greek, what they had with them uh, was uh, uh, one, one individual had all the extant Greek works uh, in his own house. And therefore, if they want to look up a word, they could go to the original source, the original writer, and check out, check see how he how he used that work, how he used that uh, in that context, and uh, that's how you have to read. That's how you have to learn what the word means. You've got to look up how it was written by a particular author, 
and to read the context he was used in. And that's what the voice uh, who could read the Hebrew Bible at the age of five uh, was able to, uh, he had that work in his home. Therefore, they have to depend on what's the cons uh, for the, uh, the Greek New Testament. And uh, when uh, the King James Bible was completed, uh, that uh, library was broken up because God was done with it. So the issue comes down simply in what uh, the, the, uh, the ritual and the Dean Burger Society wants you to believe is that uh, if you go to King James only, is you're going to a radical. You can't get too radical. You still want to depend on just spending the correct text. But it's not a matter of going uh, between, uh, you know, uh, bad text and going to the vital ground between good text. The issue is, uh, do you have a Bible or not? Do you have a Bible you can read really open up in English? And uh, so that is the issue. The, always, the issue is always final authority. Uh, is the King James Bible your final authority? Um, and when the when the inversion people are learning to the Greek, what they're doing is attacking really uh, what the King James Bible translators had intended, which was to give a, uh, a final translation, the final authority, and this is from the translators to the reader. And uh, they point out here, again, uh, to, to make a good one better, the purpose of the translation, uh, or out of many good ones, one principal good one, principal ones was, was the one. Uh, so. Uh, you would go to the King James Bible as the principal good one, not justly to be accepted against. And uh, to be accepted against means to be objected to. Uh, so when the King James Bible translates, excuse me, yeah. <clears throat> when the people object, when to the Greek Hebrew, they're object, objecting to the English meaning of the word and going against what the King James translator's intention was was to uh, uh, have a final translation that was perfect and uh, not to be accepted against, which we objected to. And that's what they did. Uh, so uh, no uh, reader of the uh, King James Bible needs to look at any, worry about any Greek and Hebrew words at all. And what the Dean Burgess Society is trying to do is maintain the scholarship class, uh, try to hold on. Now, the Bible is a teacher's you know, when He looks at Nehemiah 8. And he says they had to translate the uh, Hebrew into Aramaic. It doesn't say anything about translating anything from Hebrew into Aramaic. It says explain the sense. That means they were teaching what the uh, what these words meant in the context of what the uh, of the law. And that's what teachers do. So teachers will explain what the word mean in the context of what the Bible says, and compare scripture to scripture, and uh, are used to accelerate your learning of the Bible. They're not me meant to be as substitutes for the Bible. You have to look to them as the Bible. You look look, look at the Bible. Uh, and Paul had in, in Acts 17, 11, uh, the variants of searching the scriptures to see what, what he said was so. Uh, and, uh, and that's what the, uh, a good uh, a student of the word would do. Uh, so he has a teacher, uh, and he'll be able to search the scriptures when that teacher's teaching him, and uh, he should be able to see exactly what the teacher is explaining to him in English. Not say, you know, well, it's in Greek, so we can't understand what I'm saying. You have to take my word for it. Uh, but the fact is, is that. Uh, uh, the Gene Burgess Society is incorrect. Uh, all they've done is um, want you to accept one one group of authority scholars, or as opposed to another group of scholars, uh, the uh, James, you know, James White group. And that's what it comes down. James White will put about three, four, five different translations up, and what, you know, which one you're supposed to choose from. And uh, he wants you to, you know, well, you know, let, let the scholars tell you which was right, uh, right one. But you have the uh, perfect uh, Bible in English. You have an English translation, the King James Bible. Has some material. It is a uh, is an excellent work. I recommend you uh, read it. It talks about the uh, the men behind a lot of these lexicons and how corrupt they were. Uh, and uh, you know, but even that, even if they were you know more great uh, uh, Christian gentlemen, the fact of the matter is is that the lexicons are corrupted. The lexicons uh, uh, come from corrupt sources, uh, and uh, uh, they can't explain uh, correctly or perfectly what the King James Bible English has. And you don't need it. And that's what the perfect translation, of, of the, the purpose of the translation was, as the King James Bible translator said, not to be accepted against, not to be objected to. And that's what these guys are doing. They're objecting. They're objecting to these translations. They're saying, well, yeah, I know that word says that in English, but what does it really mean in Greek? That's an objection. And it's causing doubt. It causes you to question that English word. You want to, want to, you want to know what the English word means in that study or the context that it's being used in. And if you need to go to an English dictionary, study the context of how the word was used in the 17th century. 
But uh, you don't even need to go outside your Bible, really. The English Bible, the King's Bible, was written in such a way that it's really self-contained um, in the dictionary that uh, we just it will define itself. But you certainly don't need to go to Greek and Hebrew. And these are these languages that uh, the scholars want to cling to to try to lord over you and try to tell you, uh, you know, yeah, you see that in English, plus what's the real meaning? Uh, what's the meaning of the Greek word? And then you run to a Greek word and try to impress you. Now, of course, anybody with you know, a strong concordance going to a back of a, who, uh, it and have no knowledge of Greek and Hebrew and still try to uh, wow you with their, uh, with their lexicon in the back of, of strong concordance. And strong, of course, was a guy who was uh, a supporter of the ASB, uh, the modern translations. So, again, this is uh, uh, to, to tell you, to explain to you that the, if you have a King James Bible, uh, <coughs> uh, this is the Bible. It's not a translation of the Bible. It is the Bible uh, in English, and uh, you don't need you don't need to go to any other source. You don't need to worry, worry about what this says. You don't need to worry about uh, what lexicons and uh, yeah, strong concordance and all in the back of strong you know, the definition. All you have to do is know how to read English. If you know how to read English, you have access to God's Word because it's there in the King James Bible. Amen. Thank you.